I'm, I'm Carsten. I mean, you've uh, heard, heard me speak before, uh, if you attended the first part, at least. Um, I wanted to take that opportunity to uh, talk a little about HPC tooling. So HPC tools for Julia, how they work together. Um, I'll talk a bit about specific tools that we develop, uh, but also mention some other ones. Uh, we had some great talks about them as well. I mentioned a couple of those. Um, and, and yeah, that's, that's what we're up for in the next 10 minutes. First, let's start with the obvious. Uh, I think we all agree we need good HPC tools, right? If we want to take Julia seriously on these clusters, we've seen, you know, uh, massively parallel applications, Trixie. Uh, we need good tools to understand what the ranks are doing. Um, and there's a good news, right? We want to, first of all, we want to profile trace, you know, maybe even parallel debugging, uh, all the good stuff. And there's a good news, which is obviously there's lots of great HPC tools out there. Vendors, you know, uh, not vendors, <laughs> mostly HPC centers, but to some extent also vendors uh, have, have developed, um, you know, uh, multiple tool suites for, for profiling and, and uh, all, the, all the things. And I've, I show some plots here. And uh, the first three, at least, are uh, uh, actually Julia. Uh, so I used uh, tools uh, to, to analyze Julia code. I'll talk about uh, at least one of them in a second. There's one problem, though. Um, and that is, if you try to just utilize them, they often don't work, or at least not out of the box, right? So sometimes it's easy. You just have to write a wrapper. Uh, I'll give an example uh, of a tool where we did that in a second. Um, sometimes it gets more tricky. You have to, you know, modify the GUI internals uh, to support them properly. And sometimes they're just fundamentally incompatible because they just target a certain language and that's it. Like they analyze the source code on a syntactical level or so where you basically have to collaborate with them to, to make it work with Julia. As I said, I want to talk about a few tools that we developed at uh, PC Squared, but um, again, in the process, also mentioned some, some other tools. Um, and we, we have more than those. Uh, you can check out the link afterwards uh, to see what we are doing. The first tool I want to mention is Liquid. Um, so Liquid is a low-level tool which allows you to monitor hardware performance counters in, in CPUs to get like a very low-level understanding of what your code is doing. Um, so I show a little example on the right. So you have a multi-threaded uh, XPy. So it's the same operation that Mosi was just talking about. Uh, so the XPy is just the D is just double precision. And what you get if you use this perfmon macro, um, you, you get returned performance metrics. So it doesn't just show you some counter values, which might be hard to understand, right? Uh, but it gives you like understandable, like the bottom bottom table, understandable things like runtime, double precision, megaflops per second, right? Uh, vectorization ratio, like how much of my code was simulated properly, and so on. So that's a very low level tool that we that we uh, built. It's a, it was just a wrapper on top of Liquid, the you know same named tool developed uh, at a uh, center in Erlangen, um, uh, and. The, the, the good news is that since we are doing Julia and we're greedy in, in Julia land, right, uh, we want interactivity for everything we do. Uh, so this tool is uh, interactive. Um, typically, it's a command line tool. But in Julia, obviously, we have a macro. So you can run it in a Jupyter notebook or Pluto even or whatever. Um, as I said, this is an example of one of the things that worked out of the box in the sense you just had to wrap the, 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 you know, the, the, the C library, the shared library, uh, and then there were some issues, uh, so calling the, the tool wasn't made to be inter uh, actively used, so calling some API functions twice just segfaulted, right, because no one did this <laughs> from the command line. Uh, but fortunately, we have a good connection to the Erlang people. We could work around this. Uh, so overall, good experience. It's not portable yet because they hard-coded some paths. Again, you know, uh, I'll, I'll try to convince them to uh, help us get a JLL out. But overall, it was good. Let me mention some ex alternatives. Obviously, there's Linux Perf, which is you know is an interface to the Perf uh, module in the kernel. There's Poppy, uh, which I guess is like sort of the American pendant of of, of Liquid. <laughs> At least that's the way uh, I like to pay, uh, pose it. And um, yeah, uh, I gave a talk about Liquid uh, last year, so a full talk. If you want to learn more about it, uh, it feel free to check it out. Uh, another tool that we developed is thread pinning, right? Uh, uh, in fact, it's also a tool that Jose used in his last, uh, Mose used in his last talk for the DAXPy to pin threads to NUMA domains, right? So that you can, uh, uh, that you know, uh, know what you're doing. So thread pinning is a tool we developed for that. Uh, pin your Julia threads to specific cores, to NUMA domains in a round robin fashion or whatever. Also query and visualize your system, right? Uh, you want to know what you're doing. You want to check the threads are pinned correctly. Uh, all the good stuff is in there. How did we do it? Uh, basically, we just call into libuv and libc, you know, to, to get uh, the current core, uh, set the affinity, um, right? Currently, we use lscpu to gather the system information. Uh, 
uh, HW lock backend would also be thinkable. I chose a CPU for no good reason. It works fine. I don't see a reason to change it right now. Limitation only works on Linux. Uh, Windows PR is there, but um, I mean, we are at a Julia HPC uh, mini symposium, so I guess that's no limitation after all. Um, again, I, I gave a talk yesterday about uh, thread pinning uh, at this Julia con. Feel free to check it out whenever it is online. Uh, just some impressions I also showed yesterday, you know, pinning cores, uh, pinning to sockets, pinning to NUMA domains, right? You get all the nice visualizations. Again, you can all do this in a Jupyter notebook, in a Pluto notebook, so for a class, that's, that's good stuff, I think. Uh, and yeah, if you do it right, you can get some great speed ups, right? Uh, so I had performance tuning in my talk. You see, if you use thread pinning, I don't promise anything, but sometimes you get eight times performance uh, improvements if you have the right number of threads and all other conditions. And in parallel stencil, I made a PR, so that's the, the work connecting to the work that Ludovic was talking about earlier. Uh, there, I just took one of the examples that they have, like an acoustic wave simulation, pin to threads, and so on. And there, I got a 2.4 times speed up just by you know, making sure that everything is pinned correctly. Right, another tool I want to talk about uh, is MPI profiling and tracing. Um, and uh, so there's SCORE-P, which is a bigger tool, um, well-known in Europe, uh, developed by multiple players, uh, one of them being the uh, Jülich Supercomputing Center, uh, which we've also heard about multiple times before, the Eureka system, Jewel system, uh, was mentioned earlier by other speakers. Um, and there I also wrote a wrapper for SCORE-P, um, which is this measurement infrastructure for profiling and event tracing. Uh, so basically a tool that records everything, right? Like records the MPI calls and it, it hooks into the uh, PMPI interface, like the profiling interface of MPI. And I wanted to use it with Julia. And there I had uh, a little bit more issues. So first of all, Julia has no tracing API, right? So uh, I said PMPI, so you can easily hook into all MPI calls that are made by an application. There's a, like in the standard, there's a, you know, an uh, interface for that. Uh, but if I want to just measure all Julia functions, right, and give you a nice table of all your, it's going to be tricky, right? Uh, we have to uh, rely on user instrumentation for now, right? You have basically have to manually uh, annotate things uh, because there's no tracing API. Uh, something we definitely need at some point, I think. Um, cassette is currently the workaround, right? So cassette gives you that overdubbing mechanism, so you can basically use it. Uh, and some people do, you know, MPI tape, which I might mention if I have time in a second. Uh, X-Ray, right, uh, also currently relies on that. Um, again, similar to SCORE-P, roughly speaking, you know, a, a profiling tool. Uh, but it's a, it's a workaround because, you know, Cassette comes with performance overhead, and uh, I think we can do better, just have to do it at some point. Um, right, and, and SCORE-P is really, uh, don't look at the code, I, I would say, <laughs> because the, the problem there is they rely on LDA preload, and you have to actually compile based on what the user wants to measure, like so dynamically chooses, uh, you have to recompile like a little uh, uh, shared library. So uh, whenever you do this, I uh, like in the package, compile that library for you, uh, then LDA preload it, and then with XECV, replace your current Julia process by a different one without you noticing. Um, I, I, I made it the way that you, pre uh, you literally don't notice. If you press shift enter, it's like, it seems like nothing happened, but I tell you it was black magic under the hood. <laughs> and um, right, uh, but it works. I'll show you some plots in a second. Um, alternatives, uh, Simon gave a great talk about um, NVIDIA Insight Systems and NVTX, like which is the instrumentation framework uh, yesterday. I think that's the most, uh, much better tool right now for the job, right? Uh, so if you do something serious, use this instead of score P. I hope to get it uh, to a better state, but it's currently uh, uh, experimental. Again, uh, check out Simon's talk, uh, was yesterday, at this year's JuliaCon. Right, um, the good thing is, so I talked about the black magic already. Again, you don't notice it, you just put using score P in it at the top of your file, then you instrument your code, like my region or whatever, uh, and the reason I wrapped SCORE-P was that eventually it just produces two files, like a QBEX file and an OTF2 file, one for traces, one for profiling information. And these are common formats that are supported by all kinds of other HPC uh, tools, like visualization tools. Uh, you know, you can hook into all these other tools. Once we have that, we have like a lot, right? We, we have different graphs, 3D graphs, and all, all funny things. Um, so that's why SCORE-P is, you know, uh, one of the things that I target. Uh, and, and just to give an example, right, the profiling view you could, for example, visualize with a tool called Cube. Uh, you could also use Paraprof from, from the Tau uh, toolkit. 
um, the, the traces. You could open with Vampire. That's what you see here on the right. Uh, but you could also use the Intel Trace Analyzer. Again, once you have that format, right, you can plug it into different tools. That's, that's good stuff. And if you uh, zoom in on the, the right thing, we also have source code information here, right? Um, which is, again, is not trivial because uh, how do you propagate that information? Those tools don't support Julia syntax or whatever, right? They don't look at the code in any way. So here I just have that as part of my macro, right? So I can just uh, put it in. I think Simon does a similar thing with uh, NVTX. Um, right. All right, uh, I think I'm running out of time, but let me just quickly mention MPI tape. So MPI tape was born out of a very simple idea. We had a class uh, introduction to high performance computing, which actually uses Julia. Um, so for the first time, and, and there we want for uh, basically only for uh, pedagogical reasons or educational reasons, we wanted to track all the MPI calls, visualize them in certain ways. We weren't sure even in what ways we want to visualize them. And so I used cassette, again, that's the workaround we currently have to just track everything. So I just track all the MPI calls. You can basically think of it as PMPI just self-made on the Julia level, right? So not hooking into the on the, on the C level into the well-defined uh, MPI uh, profiling interface, but just my own interface on the Julia level. Advantages, I can do everything in Julia. Um, and, uh, right, and it produces files for every rank, right, which contains all the, all the stuff. You can even track arguments and, and everything. You have full information, and then you can visualize it. So here I show a combined tape of a simple thing, different colors or different ranks. You see the sends and receives who talked to whom and so on. So I, I hope that there are nice, uh, uh, you know, possibilities for, for those kinds of tools. And um, just as a comment, Simon and I talked about this, right? And uh, a cool thing would be if you could replay everything. You, since you have recorded everything, you might want to replay it and then say, I want to be on rank five with an interactive REPL, right? And and the rest should basically mimic the, the, the real run of the application. So we have lots of ideas there, but only limited time. And final slide, uh, tracing API, I want it. Uh, I don't know who's going to provide it, uh, but uh, I'm on board, at least to help. Uh, we need common instrumentation so that all the bunch of packages that we have, essentially, it would be cool to have just one macro and that you can switch the back end, right, so that you don't have to instrument the code multiple times. User documentation, more tools. There are lots of out there, lots of work to be done. That's it, I'm done. Reach out to me. Thank you. We have time for a couple of questions. Uh, Tau. Have yeah. you look at Tau and probably make it part of the this sort set of backends? Yes and no. So I looked at it and I didn't do any work on it because, uh, I mean, uh, the frank answer is uh, obviously I have a German bias. I work as a German HPC center and, you know, score P is just right not next door, but sort of next city. So that was my, for, for strategical reasons, my, my first choice. Um, but I, I'm not opposed to doing anything uh, with Tao. And also the documentation I found at the beginning slightly confusing. I've never used Tao before. Uh, so Score P was much, much uh, better documented. Yeah, but no good reason, so I'm, I'm open for it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, they're, they're very also um, willing to look into Julia. From yeah. There. HPC Toolkit is another thing, you know, with yeah. DOP thing. Yeah. In general, I'm interested in correctness tools for Julia. So mm -hmm. one would be, there was a tool that my co-advised students presented yesterday, Float Track Tracker. I attended the talk, yeah, nice talk. Yeah. And the other uh, wish list I have is uh, data race checking. Do people complain about data races? Yeah, uh, uh, funny that you mentioned it, data race checking. There's a tool in Germany called Must. I had never heard of it before. Uh, maybe that's on me, but uh, I attended, the, oh, I gave, gave a workshop actually, and one of the authors was within the, the room. And we chatted about it, and obviously the first thing you do is to try it out, and it already works quite well uh, with Julia. There are some rough edges uh, where we could. Yeah, yeah, and uh, and uh, so yeah, I'm I'm very uh, hopeful because they also rely on LD preload. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I, I fully agree. Again, the list is long, right? Uh, and if anyone wants to join the the effort of uh, supporting these tools, feel free to reach out. So Julia-based does support TSEN, ASEN, and MSEN. 
there are lots of interesting questions around deployability and how you make it easy for users to use and how you give good answers back that users can act on yeah. or the tools are supported. Yeah, must must switch out an HTML table, I think, right? Which and then green color for you did a good job and red color for something's wrong and yeah, I kind of again, I'm not a not a must user, but I I've, I've played around with it. Okay, let's thank again to Karsten. Um, we have now still five minutes for a little Q and A about the whole session. If if there are more questions to to bring up, uh, it could be about anything. So, actually, going back to the API because this is very important, right? Uh, having a working you mean group, the tracing API, the tracing a tracing API profile. Having a working group that is dedicate at least to have like some sort of spec, I think it's worth it from where we are now. What do you think? Absolutely, and and I have one more reason. Python have it, right? Obviously they screw performance. I mean, they have, have a problem. Uh, they, it's not even a, a race, but uh, they, they have it. Like I think there's the sys set trace or whatever, right? So you can just basically hook into everything. Uh, Should we just steal them? <laughs> yeah, we want have, we have we are more greedy. We want to have a division. We have cassette, right? Uh, we, we want to be more efficient, like, yeah, I don't know, Valentin, you have to. So, so one question that comes immediately to mind. If you want to trace everything, um, do you want to trace? You want to obviously say every Julia function call want to be traced. No. Well, Python can do that because it's interpreting and every function call is costly. Yeah. In Julia, we do inline and we do optimization. Yeah, yeah. So what happens in those contexts? Do we want to make your code a lot slower? Or are we okay with losing some information and making your code only a little bit slow? Yeah. Um, and the related question is, well, or you, could you annotate specific functions and say, I want to trace these functions, but yeah. you know, typically it's going to be like the high level ones, but you don't, you know, the interior ones are not. Yeah. Yeah, as a, as a specific well, example to support Simon's point, uh, if I may, timer outputs, right? What lots of people do is, I've seen it multiple times, they write macros that they can annotate their function definitions with. Yeah. So sort of get auto annotation in a manual way, right? Like even something, you know, there might be a middle ground, right? That's uh, 